In this project, I'm going to show you how to use clones in Scratch. Clones are ways of adding sprites to the project while the program is running. They're a little more full-featured than stamping, which just makes an image, and a little more flexible than duplicating uh, sprites before the program starts. Much of the clone stuff is here in the control section, and you can create a clone of either the sprite or a different sprite. You can delete a clone and there's a header that says when I start as a clone. In this project so far I have the scratch cat with some basic movement events uh, already programmed in. So when the left arrow is pressed it points to the left and moves 10 steps and when the right arrow is pressed it points to the right and moves 10 steps. So I can make the cat go back and forth. The goal of this game is to basically have the cat generate butterflies every time you press the spacebar. So it's like you can imagine running around and adding things to a, a game or an adventure or something like that. To get started that we know we're going to want to check for that spacebar key being pressed and when that happens, I want to create a clone of the butterfly. So I go back to control and use the create clone block. And instead of myself, in this case myself is the cat because we're in the, in the cat script area, I'm going to create a clone of butterfly1. Now we need some code on the butterfly to make it appear by the cat and bounce around the screen. So I'm going to click on the butterfly. Now. The first thing we want to do is um, to hide the butterfly when the program first starts. We don't need the butterfly hanging around. We only want the butterflies to show up on top of the cat as we're moving around. So under the green flag, I'm just going to tell the butterfly to hide itself. Then when it detects that it has started, when I start as a clone, in other words, when a new butterfly clone has been created. There's a couple things we want to do. We want to move it to where the cat is now. So under motion, I'm going to use a go to sprite one, which is the cat sprite one. I'm going to point it in a random direction like we did with the ghosts. So try to think if you can remember how to do that and give that a try, but I'll show you again how we did that. We uh, did a point in direction and then operators I picked a random number and for direction we can pick numbers between 1 and 360 which is the number of degrees in a circle. So it picks a number point in, in, in any direction on the stage. At this point we should show the butterfly clone and now I just want to move and bounce around the screen. So I'm going to do a repeat forever, move 10 steps. Let's change the costume. It has two costumes here, so I'll do a next costume so it flaps its wings. And you might remember under motion there is that helpful block if on edge bounce. So that way it doesn't get stuck in the corners. So if I run the program, there's not much to it, right? Just the cat moving left and right, and the space key creating a clone of Butterfly1, and then some stuff to set up the program with a green flag, hiding the, hiding the butterfly, and then basically moving it to the cat, pointing it, and making it move once we uh, hit the space bar. So I hit the green flag, the butterfly has gone away, I move back and forth, and I decide to hit the space bar to release the butterfly. And a little butterfly comes out. It's kind of chasing me here. I'm going to hit another one, bouncing off in a new direction. And notice, we don't know that more sprites are created down here. It doesn't say clone one, clone two, or clone three, or anything like that, because they're not really duplicates of the sprite. They're a clone that appears during the program. And I can make a whole bunch more. So this is where maybe you start to see the advantage of the clones. If I had to create a clone for all the, I mean a duplicate for all of those, 
I would fill up my sprite area with a bunch of these things that are exactly the same. So it's nice being able to just create copies of them. You may notice something else that eventually your program does start to slow down with clones. The computer is doing a lot of work writing the programs for each one of those little little characters. And so while it's sort of interesting to see a whole bunch of things flying around the screen, you should think about whether you really want to uh, create 20 or 30 clones of something before you do that. And uh, you know, I could just get wild here and make a whole bunch of them. So eventually fill the screen. I think eventually that probably will cause some problems for your computer. So don't make too many of them. All right, so that's how you use clones. Pretty easy. The main thing is there's the original one that reacts to the green flag being clicked. And then there are the clones that react to when I start as a clone. And so the, the original one's a little different from the clones. But they're all versions of the same sprite here. So enjoy clones and uh, look at the assignment to see what you need to do to use them in your own project.